So now he goes into, this is the hard part now, okay, I'm afraid. Okay, so he goes into understanding what this, ref, this relationship of one thing to another thing involves, right? And, and he's got these two, he, he talks about a relate and a correlate, right? And so a relate is really like a related thing, and then the correlate is that second thing. So if we, if we started out just now with, okay, we have one quality, it means that we must have a second quality. So if we have blackness, then we must have non-blackness or whiteness or something, whatever you know, right? So well, let's, let's just assume we've got blackness and then <coughs> and, and in order to understand what blackness is, we have to have some other thing and we'll just call it whiteness right now, yeah? Okay, so, so the, the relate would be blackness and then the correlate is whiteness, right? So, so <coughs> that's that second thing that's necessary in order for that first thing to even have any meaning, right? Now, this process of looking at blackness and thinking, oh, there must be whiteness that's contrasting the blackness, that's a comparison, right? And he says that that relationship of comparison is actually a very complicated one. And he says here, the occasion of reference to a correlate is obviously by comparison. This act has not been sufficiently studied by the psychologists, and it will therefore be necessary to adduce some examples to show in what it consists. Okay, so then he says, okay, this is actually a very complicated relationship, and I'm going to try and explain to you how, what this relationship implies, right? And so this is, this is his, you know, he's trying to, to look at this relationship of, of one thing to another thing. It's a comparison, and he's going to try and explain to us, well, what does this imply? What's already contained in this relationship that we haven't seen already? And he gives us this example. So the first example he gives us is this letter P and the letter B. Right? And he says, suppose we wish to compare the letters P and B, we may imagine one of them to be turned over on the line of writing as an axis, uh, on a, as an axis then laid upon the other, and finally to become transparent so that the other can be seen through it. Um, in this way, we shall form a new image which mediates between the images of the two letters inasmuch as it represents one of them to be when turned over the likeness of the other. Okay? So that's his explanation, and I've just drawn a little picture of this. Right? So you've got the P and the B, <coughs> And in order to understand the relationship between P and B, you've got to understand, okay, you can, you can flip this around on the axis, right? And then you get this shape, he's turned transparent, and then we relate it to this, and as we say, oh, it's the same shape, right? And he's saying, what, what we're doing here is where we've got P and B, and then we've got this, this sort of um, movement of P over the axis and then comparing it with that B, that's the mediating relationship by which we can understand that relationship between P and B. Right? So we need that process, this, this whole loop here, in order to understand that comparison, to see how P relates to B. Right? Uh, and, and we see through this that, there's, they, that they both have a common ground which is a shared quality, which is the shape. They have the same shape, right? But we don't see it until we've done through this little process, right? And so he's saying that even though they, they have this shared quality, we don't see the shared quality until we, the interpretant explains that shared quality to us, right? And how it is that they share the quality, right? Okay, so that's just... That's the first example. Well, let's go, go to the second example, right? Second example, he says, the murderer can be compared to a murdered person, right? Uh, suppose we think of a murderer as being rela in relation to a murdered person. In this case, we conceive the, the act of the murder, and in this conception, it is represented that corresponding to every murderer as well as to every murder, there is a murdered person, right? Okay, so we've got the murderer, we've got the murdered person, and then what's the interpretation, what's the conception, what's the mediating conception? We've got this, this murder, right? And so we've got this conception of murder, right? That is the mediating representation between the murder and the murdered person, right? Um, and without that mediating representation, then we don't understand that there's that relationship. And I mean, for us it's clear, you know, every time there's a murderer, there has to be a murdered person, right? But it's naturally not an obvious thing. Right? I mean, if, if you, you know, it's, 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 uh, you know, it's, it's like your dog might not understand that, right? Your, your dog could see the murdered person and might not say, oh, there must be a murderer, right? Uh, and, <coughs> well, we'll go into this a little deeper in a moment, but, but what's key is that he's saying that 
the, the, that comparison relationship needs this, this other thing, this other third thing, in order to establish the comparison and the basis of the comparison and to, to make that relationship. So we've got the related thing, the correlate, and the mediating representation. Right? And, <coughs> and in this, um, we're also, this mediating representation is also indicating the ground of the comparison. Right, that there's a shared quality, and the shared quality is both of these, the murdered murder and the murdered person, they both participate in this, this one action. And this one action requires these two, two, two pieces, the, you know, the murder and the murder. Right? Uh, and, and, he, and he's saying without the mediating representation, there's no way to make that comparison between the two different things. Right? Okay, so further, and this is something that he doesn't really lay out explicitly, but I'm going to just lay it out for you here. This is a linguistic relationship. I mean, murderer, murdered person, murder, those are all words. And they're just, uh, and they're words that link up these different images of things, or, or link up these things. So there's, there's actually, we're, we're kind of overlaying a kind of reality of things, these impressions, with these words that define the relationships between these, these entities, right? And so the, <coughs> you know, what's kind of going on is we've got all of these things, these, what we, you know, we're, we're starting with is this multiplicity of impressions, and we're taking these impressions, these multiplicity of impressions, and establishing relationships between these impressions, but that happens through language, through our language that has these relationships. So obviously the verb to murder Right, is a verb that you can only use with a subject, which is the murderer, he murdered him, right, and has an object as well. So it's defining the, you know, the verb itself def is defining these two parts, which is the subject of the, of the, of the verb and the object, the direct object of the verb. And the, the verb can't function without those two pieces, and that's what's then defining the relationship in the world between the murderer and the murdered person and that act of murder, right? So th I want you to notice that, <coughs> that <coughs> this forming of relationships between impressions in the world requires this forming of relationships linguistically, okay? <coughs>